And I'm joined now by Dr. George Schofield, who has a great story to tell us about a luncheon he was recently at. So, good morning. Good morning. I went to a lunch, and this very nice woman next to me said in the middle of the conversation that she and her husband were very happy in their retirement at 65, and she hoped her children and her grandchildren would be equally happy in their retirement at 65. I'm very glad that she's enjoying her retirement, mm -hmm. but I nearly fell off my chair because <laughs> how could she be more clueless about what her children and her grandchildren's future are going to be like? Yeah, that is why we were joking. It's like, when you want to retire at 65, I'm saying you're going to have to pull me off television <laughs> by then. But how much does it really matter whether or not you know they attempt to understand their children or their grandchildren's well, future? It depends upon how close you want to be to your children or your grandchildren. It's one thing to give them gifts when they're little. It's another thing to have real conversations with them as they go along so you understand. I have an 18-year-old granddaughter who's a major scientist, a major geek, champion swimmer. In the old days, I would have expected her to get at eight, is she 18 now that she would have been married in her middle 20s, mm -hmm. that she would have had begun a career, that she'd get married and have children. I have no idea what's going to happen with Laura's life. And so the idea for me is the more I keep track of her now and we have real conversations, the more I'm likely to be able to be really connected to her later in my life. And that's important to me. It's not important to everybody. Yeah. Now, what, yeah, what are some of those emerging variables that, you know, we, so we here's what to track. One is education. In the old days, you majored in something and that determined what we we're going to do for the rest of our mm -hmm. lives. No longer true. So education is going to be lifelong. We may help our kids get college degrees or our grandchildren, but we're also going to have to pay attention to the fact that they're going to have to be certified in all new technologies and all new learnings just to be employable for the rest of their lives. The second thing is the configuration of work. It's lovely that our job scores are up and we have mm -hmm. so many people employed, but work is really going to go toward configuration of the gig as well as the job. So that's going to change. Who's running households? And what do they think? That's already changed dramatically. Yes. Who's really the breadwinner? <laughs> and finally, health and longevity. If you retired at 65, Ben, and you leave to be, live to be 105, you have 40 years. Yeah. I don't know how you'd save enough money and what you would do with those 40 years if you simply stopped working. That's a very good point there. Now, so what do you think our best source of information is I think about their futures? You are. I think talking to our children and our grandchildren about what they imagine and what's really going on in their lives on a regular basis is really the very best source for us because it's like going to the people who really know. So I try to do that, including with my 18-year-old granddaughter. Exactly. And some quality time, family time to spend together. Absolutely. We always enjoy you spending time with us here in the morning. Thank you, sir. On the morning edition, George Schofield. You can check him out at georgeschofield.com. And we'll be right back after this. Stick Thanks, around. Ben.